Okay, good afternoon. My name is Jean Paul Jacob. I'll try not to take more than half an hour to show my ignorance into some things that we have not yet discussed. I think that search problems are going to get much worse because what I'm going to be talking about is what I believe is the future of the Internet or the Web. And I'll try to justify why that is the future in terms of economic reasoning. Most of you are not economists, so you probably will believe me. So uh, I'm entering an artificial world here called Second Life where I have placed all my presentation. And let's see if I can do that. And this is a live demonstration, by the way. I am in this world called Second Life. So imagine, imagine if you will, that someone would come from Mars and tell you, show me the Earth in five minutes or six minutes. You, uh, you will have a hard problem doing that. So I'm going to try to show you My presentation is in Second Life and will be made from Second Life. So let me try to tell you what I intend to do in the six minutes I have. I'm going to try to convince you that we live in a services economy, that in a services economy there are some features of services that forces us to be innovative, to progress, to get more market. Innovation has some barriers which we don't know how to overcome in universities or even in industry, namely multidisciplinarity, openness, etc. And then I'm going to show you the, the solution to those to overcoming those barriers is perhaps technology, and I'm going to show you one technology which I, be, I believe overcomes those barriers. That's 3D virtual worlds, but 3D virtual worlds, as cute as they are, and I hope I'll convince you of that, are very difficult to search for anything. So as a homework, at the end I'm going to give you homework. I'm going to tell you there are several things that exist in Second Life, like a copy of the Campanile in Berkeley, and I'm going to ask you to try to find that Campanile in Second Life. Okay, so now... I'm, okay, we are all knowledge workers working in the service economy. Knowledge is different for me than information or data. Knowledge is that which you extract from information or data with a mathematical model, a statistical model, a social model, data mining, etc. So there's lots of data. The Internet knows almost everything but tells us almost nothing. It's very difficult to find the things we want to, and this is going to get worse. So we are knowledge workers each time more, working in a services economy. Every economy of every country in the world, and there are more than 200 countries, as you learned this morning, every economy can be measured by one of the indices. It's called the gross domestic product, the GDP, which has three sectors, agriculture, industry, and services. And when one of these sectors occupies more than 50% of the GDP, the economy receives that name. The United States is a services economy, because 80% of the United States gross domestic product is in services. So you are all into a service economy. You are graduates and students who are going to work in service economy. At Yahoo, Google, IBM, Microsoft, we all work in a services economy. So what in the heck is a service and what does it make it important for us to understand? So let me... Services are characterized by four conditions that are necessary and sufficient. I'm going, to go going only to illustrate two of them. The first one, every service is a co-production, namely the person supplying the service and the recipient of the service, the entity supplying the entity receiving, have to co-produce it. It has to be a joint adventure. So if you go to a doctor, the doctor is performing a service, you have to describe as well as you can what are you feeling to which intensity and so forth. So services are co-production. While products are not co-productions, you sell a television, you never cared how the user has or not thought about the television, he buys it or not, he or she buys it or not. The second co property of services, which is a very important one, is that services are intangible. There is no metrics to measure the quality of a service. So you cannot compare two services and say, my doctor is better than yours. Makes no sense. There are no metrics. So that's going to play a major role into what I'm going to say next. If you are in a services and you are all in a services company, you cannot conquer market by stealing from a competitor saying, I'm doing better. The way you conquer market in a service economy is by innovating and creating new needs, new demand for products. So the great driver, driver behind services is innovation. Innovation that creates some need or demand that didn't exist before. Innovation has, however, however some barriers. Innovation is typically open, collaborative, multidisciplinary, global. No company 
is encouraging innovation that way. Like you don't want to fail in front of your professor advisor or in front of your manager if you are in industry. Innovation requires the need of failure. Innovation requires you are taking risks. It's very risky not to take risks, but you don't want to take risks, you don't want to fail, typically in innovation, because your superiors are there. So, two minutes, whoa, whoa. Okay, thank you very much. Uh -huh. So, innovation requires some barriers. Innovation has some barriers, which I have illustrated here by this barrier in the air. And the way to overcome these barriers is to create technology. And the technology that has been created that I'd like to demonstrate in the next half hour is called Second Life, virtual world. In Second Life, we are all represented. It's a world like this one. It has over 5,000 regions, and you're represented by an avatar. When you meet another avatar, there's only an avatar name, and the avatar is like a Barbie doll. It's some things that represent you, and you go in this world of imagination. The avatar doesn't have a rank. The avatar doesn't have a position. The other avatar does not have a color on the skin, etc. So you are encouraging innovation. So what I'd like to do then is to either take you on a, on a tour of Second Life. First, let me tell you that we are really in Second Life here. Here is my avatar. And an avatar can run, can walk. Uh, this is walking. I have an island. This is the island of Almaden. And by the way, this presentation is in the island. So you can go there, and you can place the camera wherever you want. Let me just fly a little, and then I'll tell you the problems, because I also have one minute to tell you problems. I'm flying over a library. You can see a flipper. I have a, a kind of a marine life aquarium there where you can study marine life. I have a library to my right lower side. side. I have meeting rooms like this one. I have open amphitheaters, and I have something called a holodeck, for those of you who saw those movies uh, in space. I have a house here where the, at the touch of a button you, show, you change the environment. And this is an open-air amphitheater, and I have an R&D volcano from the movie, 1967 movie of James Bond, You Only Live Twice, in which Spectre, the adversary, had a volcano where... Uh, Spectre did its research and development. So I do my research and development in a volcano. So let me go back to the challenges, and I want to just fly back, if you allow me, fly back and show you my one minute of what are the open problems here. So I'm flying back. This is the Jacob Hall, which is an auditorium. By the way, there are many lectures. You can pipe in live, live demonstrations, live talks, and so forth. And many universities are doing that. Harvard has a, two campuses here, and they do pipe in uh, all kinds of live lectures. So let me... Okay, so three images of the Berkeley Campanile. One of them is uh, in Second Life. It's just a replica in scale to the Campanile. The other two are real. Your homework to see how difficult it is to search in this environment because you are searching by image content and images in 3D. Your task is to try to find the real Campanile here, then go and find it in Second Life. And the question is, is that a replica of the UC Berkeley campus also? and which buildings are replicated. It's very hard to search in this 3D world. However, our minds, I claim, are wired for 3D images. We memorize much better 3D images than 2D images. And what I wanted to say in my last slide, because I know I'm going to be cut, is that there's not such a thing as exclusively research in 3D. Research is in 5D. 3D plus the flat web. We have to use information that is already available, which is in 2D. I call that research in 5D, but now we also introduce the time element, and I call that research in 6D. What happened in Second Life yesterday? I saw an object there. Was it removed and so forth? How to do search in virtual worlds? That's a problem that I have, and I think I'll leave it here. <laughs>